My brother was born the day the, of the moon landing on the 16th of, uh, no, the day that the rocket took off on the 16th of July. And when they were bringing him home from the hospital four days later, they, my parents pulled in the garage and they were listening on the radio of the moon landing and they, they, couldn't, they couldn't leave the car, they were gonna miss it. So they stayed in the car, <laughs> listened to the radio on the 20th of July. So yeah. Moon baby shit. But what's his name? Does he, does he have Eric, a lunar name? Eric. They, clever. they didn't get that creative. So. <laughs> oh no, that's too bad. <laughs> so that was a very important moment in history that people didn't see coming. But when they saw the earth from that perspective, it somehow maybe subconsciously changed the human species. That's why I referenced it as a firmware upgrade. Yeah. You know, a firmware in the deepest level of the software, it affects everything that unfolds beyond it. And if you asked people, well, why did you start Earth Day? And they just, well, it, it feels like a good idea, I think. And they're not probably not consciously thinking that they had just seen Earth from space. So that's why I reference it as a firmware upgrade rather than as a force that's sort of explicitly hitting people on the head. It was more subtle than that. Yeah. It's interesting how um, when you travel to a different country, you learn things about yourself. And sometimes when you meditate and get out of your own immediate consciousness, you can see your own actions. Yeah, in a fresh light, that's yeah. correct. Yeah. And um, if it's what you expected, fine. But if it's not, it's a, you've empowered yourself to do something about it, having known what the causes and effects are of those influences. You, you titled the book Starry Messenger, which I guess is the English translation of, of Galileo's original book. And he wrote a book at the time that was scientifically correct and factual, but that went against the grain of what was culturally accepted from all the power structures, which is kind of the essence of what you're all about, I think. Let's, you, like, let's look at the science and learn from that. Can you talk about the significance of naming that and how you see that Galileo book and what happened at that time? Yeah, so just, uh, just that, so that we're all on the same page, uh, around 1600, two remarkable things happened. The microscope and the, t the compound microscope, the, the modern variant of a microscope, uh, rather than just a magnifying glass. The compound microscope and the telescope were both invented within a decade of each other in the early 1600s, both by Dutch optical manufacturers. The Dutch were, had, had perfected optics um, long before anybody else did. So it's not a surprise that those two inventions came out of the Netherlands. So Galileo, upon hearing of this, said, that's a brilliant idea. I'll make one of these on my own. And so he made the best existing telescope in the world at the time. By the way, the name of it was not telescope. It, it was something called, uh, it's some Latin, which means spyglass, <laughs> Just, which is an indication of how people were using it, all right? <laughs> yeah. uh, it was not, I don't think it was considered a scientific uh, uh, a bulwark. Isn't it tech was, always used? What are you used, doing through that window? Isn't tech so, always used in nefarious means, the first iteration of tech? Is it always yeah, used? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So he invents one and he then, shows it to the Doge of Venice and says, with this new device, he goes to the clock tower, the high tower in, in, the, in the plaza, uh, in the piazza, and he shows the Doge of Venice that you can identify whether a ship in the harbor is friend or foe nearly 10 times farther away than you can with your naked eye thereby giving you that much more time to prepare if you see that you're about to be invaded. And so the Doge ordered up, I forgot how many, a dozen telescopes, some, but some number of telescopes where he was then financially stable. <laughs> and he says, okay, this is good. Now I can look up into the universe, which is what he did. And you had to think that that was something to do. Why would you think looking at the sky with this piece of equipment would bring you any different information than your eyes would? Same with a microscope. Why aren't your eyes just seeing everything that's seeable? Why would God make you an organism without the capacity to know things that are going on right in front of you? 
when Antoine von Leeuwenhoek showed Drew what he saw in pond water. The idea, what kind of audacity is that? He invents a microscope and said, gee, I'm going to look at a drop of pond water. Why would you even think to do that? That's part of the brilliance of being a brilliant scientist. To any of the rest of us, it's just water. It's transparent. You're wasting your time. He looks in it and he sees countless, what he called animacules, cutest word ever, (laughs) (laughs) a a prettily a swimming in this drug. These are paramecia, amoeba, all these things. And he writes to the, to the, to his colleagues uh, at, at, in London. Okay. The, the, um, the clearinghouse for scientific discoveries, they sort of freshly conceived as a place where scientists would exchange ideas. He writes and tells them, they write back and say, okay, next time, um, make your observations before you drink your gin. (laughs) And then tell us, so they didn't believe him. Why would you believe that? My gosh. Okay, so the skepticism was real, but in science, you check it out. And so in fact, they, they visited him and they saw it and they can make one of their own. And oh my gosh, uh, biology, microbiology was off to a start. With the telescope, Galileo uh, sees that Venus has phases like the moon. He sees that Jupiter has what he calls Jovian stars. The, the, he, well, I would think that planets would have moons around them. This is not something that's not a thought. But he saw that Jupiter had these little dots of light. And as Jupiter moved against the background stars, they moved with it. So they were attached somehow, and he followed them and noticed that they orbited Jupiter. It was the first time anybody saw that Earth was not the center of all motion. Mm -hmm. And so he viewed these as messages from the stars, starry messenger. So so I I was moved by that. By the way, in Latin, it's Siderius Nuncius. I was moved by that. And I wanted to continue that tradition of seeing what other messages can we get from the universe, starry messages, now that we have the levels of the technology and knowledge and wisdom that is 400 years advanced beyond Galileo. Hence the title of the book, that's my long answer to your simple question, Starry Messenger, Cosmic Perspectives on Civilization. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public and he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast, it's going to be bloody, it's going to be nasty. But at the same time, he's going to show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim, watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's going to happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real. And he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. Hey, it's Brian Rose, founder of the DeFi Academy. I've told you my four-week crypto bootcamp is amazing, but don't take my word for it. This is what my students are saying. The DeFi Academy was an amazing experience for me. It took me totally out of my comfort zone. In this course, I was challenged. I was held accountable and pushed to do things that honestly weren't always easy. It's been phenomenal and I can't believe uh, we're already up on our four weeks. It has flown by. Going through this DeFi accelerator by far was one of the best courses I've taken. You do this course, you really get into the nitty gritty of the activities that will make you comfortable with decentralized finance. Thank you so much to Brian and everyone at London Real and the DeFi Academy for even putting together an amazing course like this. Anybody else that wants to do it, please sign up. It is well worth the money.